Boom. This meeting is being recorded. Okay. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. It's May 2nd. It's Tuesday. It's noon for me, but it's not noon for anyone else here. <laughs> Except for maybe Sophia. Sophia, yeah. yeah. We're the noon crew. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. Let me uh, just share this. Boom. We've been talking about pickled everything this morning. So, yeah. If anybody else has a pickled thing they like, feel free to add that to the list. I don't see anybody putting pickled pig's feet. Is that a thing? I, I it is. Like it is. It is. It sounds disgusting, but I believe it's a thing. Yeah. This vegetarian is going to say that's a hard pass. Yeah. yeah. This non-vegetarian is going to say that's a hard pass. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> seems seems reasonable. I would really. I'm curious to know what they taste like, though. I mean, I would. I don't want to try them. I just want to live vicariously through someone else. So if anybody yeah. had them, um, I'm just curious. Well, Sophia's grandmother used to eat yeah. them. Nice. <laughs> they were terrifying. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's like it looks like like formaldehyde body parts to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not super appetizing. They need to work on their marketing, like the marketing of pickled pig's feet. It could be, better, I think. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, so we're gonna hop into the agenda. Um, we do not have a meeting next week. Um, so because ChaosCon is happening that same day, even though there isn't a, a strict conflict, because um, that's in the afternoon, but um yeah if you would like to still connect with chaos because we know that you will just miss us if you don't have chaos in your face for one day um you should join ChaosCon instead and we'll be hanging out in the slack channel if you're virtual so uh if you want to sign up you can it's free um and you know you can just do it and then you're also signed up for uh ossna at the same time here's all the info about chaos con in case anybody's missed it and then here's how you register. You can just do that here, right here. Mm -hmm. So feel free to join us, and we'll, then we'll be hanging out in the Chaos Con uh, Slack channel for anybody who is virtual. We'll just be chatting in there. No big. I'm, I'm sorry. Did you say it was free? I believe for it is, right? for online. It yeah, is. for virtual. For virtual. Yeah. Really? Yeah. For, yes. For so both. we have like seven thousand people registered virtually. Yeah, yeah, we have a bunch. That's, <laughs> have a bunch that's is this the first year they're doing Linux? The yeah. Linux Foundation is doing that. Mm, they... um, I don't know. That's a great question. I think in the past maybe it has cost a nominal fee to join virtually, but yeah, this year. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember it ever being free. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Um, okay. Anybody have questions about ChaosCon? How to join? What's going on with it? Anything? I do. Right. We have on our page a speakers and session description section that currently reads to be announced. Do we just want to remove that section, or is there content? There's a, there's a schedule here. Yeah. Oh, I see this descriptions. Um, I'm fine with just removing it. I think at this point we may as well, because by the time we assembled the content, I'm not sure it would matter. Um, and since there's only a handful of speakers, if we wanted to do the middle ground, we could, I don't know how easy it is to update the website, but just link to like an external bio for people just to like kind of meet in the middle, but I, I agree that it's just simpler to remove the section, um, given that we're a week away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, true. So we would need something from Georg, from you, Sophia, and from Emma, Sean. And then I think, Sean, you said there was another speaker we're adding to. Yeah, Kelly Dolphy from Red Hat is going to join in the Augur update. Okay. You might actually be able to link to some of these people's um, bios on the OSSNA sketch. That's what I was thinking. Because I, I think most of these people should have one there. Yeah. Okay. True. Yeah, I think I have one up for that conference. Okay, so I will, I can do that. Um, link to OSSNA bios if they are there. Okay, cool. Oh, under speakers and 
All right, cool. You want to just link in the agenda in the schedule? Yeah. Oh, oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably better even and just take that out. Yeah, remove that section and I like that. So the plan is to just remove it. Just remove it and then link we're linked to the speaker under here on the schedule part. Oh, and Sophia says LinkedIn. Oh, that's a good idea too. I, I like the in conference bios because those are more focused on the conference. But if they're not there, then I think I think everyone's on LinkedIn, but I don't want to assume that. Yeah, I can track that down. And if there are anything missing. Um, I'll just, I can just reach out to that person because we don't have a ton, so it's all good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for bringing that up, Georg. Anything else with CASCON? I went ahead and removed it while we were here. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Yes. I'm just going to do I uh, format less. Oh, never mind. I was going to just scratch it out, but I'll just delete it then. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I guess if we're talking about chaos con things now versus later, I would bring up one more thing. Sure. Um, sometimes we have an informal social plan, and I didn't know if I'm happy to sort of poke the Slack channel and see who's around for things, but do we have like a, a day or time that we would want to do that? I know we're like an afternoon session. Because usually, like, I feel like in the mornings, we've just like said right after um, or get lunch or something, and we don't really have that option as the like evening session. So, either right after or maybe like a meetup during Chaos Con. I didn't, or sorry, during Open Source Summit. I didn't know if people wanted to do a separate meetup that's more like socially minded. Um, I'm happy to sort of, again, like try to get people together, but I didn't know if we wanted to float a day, time, or thing. I love the idea of just getting together right after. Chaos. Yeah, I do too. Because I don't think there's anything else. I just looked. There's not really anything else on the schedule in the evening. So maybe uh, like a dinner or something, something informal. I do have a conflict, but I was trying to sneak some of you in it. <laughs> but I don't know if I could get in the entire event. But that again, don't let me hold that back. That's just me being selfish and wanting to hang out with everyone. Uh, what time are we ending? I guess that's the other question. Is it is it five or six? I should know five. This. Five. And then from five to six, ten are lightning talks, and some of those I was planning to attend. So if we have dinner plans after six, I'm all for that. Those are OSSNA lightning talks, Georg. Yes. Oh, I see. So the conference, not our conference. What time is your conflict, Sophia? Uh, it's six to nine. So it's it's sort of a, a dinner and all encompassing thing. I did not pick the day, unfortunately. Well, maybe we could do we could do like a happy hour or coffee or something from five to six and then do something something else afterwards and just try to yeah. just do something long and informal. <clears throat> like we could even, you know, meet up in one of the like hotel restaurants or something kind of cheesy if we wanted to just have like drinks and snacks. I, I mean, I like that. Just like a, a spot where people can kind of come and go if other people have other schedule conflicts too. So like I would go right after and then maybe dip out for a bit and then maybe come back. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, I don't remember what any of the hotel bar restaurants are like there and i'm saying at the pinnacle i can check that out on monday um i arrive monday afternoon i can do a little bit of scouting to see if there's like a a low-key place that we can just kind of post up at sounds like there is a plan um should we put something on the official schedule or do you just want to pop that in the slack channel or how do you all want to promote that if at all I think the Slack channel is a good place. That's where we've done it before. Okay. OK, 
Okay, cool. Thank Whoever's you. Whoever's posting these links, by the way, thank you. You're amazing. Big hearts to you doing all my leg work for me. I mean, I got a whole long list of other things you can do. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes, <laughs> Sean G's talk was not accepted, so. Okay, Sean, you want me to just link to your website? Uh, yeah, this is seangoggins.net. Seangoggins.net. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Um, okay, should we move on? Are we good? Let's talk about this reimbursement for ChaosCon EU waiting for LFX. I put that on there. I have, um, I submitted the receipts from the hotel and from the, yeah, from the hotel for the room and for the snacks and drinks. And the LFX platform says, yay, it's submitted. And it's been one and a half months since and in the past they've paid out much quicker. And I've tried to reach out directly to the email that's on the LFX. I've reached out to, through their issue tracker. And so far I've not been paid. So I was wondering if anyone else on the call has other ideas for how I can help move this forward. I don't know. Uh, who are your contacts at the LFX? I just contacted the generic LFX reimbursement email, whatever it's, it is. I can just poke around to see if others have heard similar delays, or maybe if we can find out anything that would help to shed light on either broken or slowing things down. But I just I didn't know if you were working with a person, but it sounds like just a, the general the amorphous I would, process i would reach out to do you know michael delong pray no i do not know michael okay so i've worked with michael on like linux foundation finance stuff in the past and he's pretty responsive i don't think he would be the one that could like do the insight stuff but he, he would at least know how to um I think probably get it moving. I can, I'll share his contact with you, Gary. Yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. Thanks for bringing that up, Gary. Um, Do we want to move on? Anybody else have any ideas or comments about that? No. Right. Let's go on to this governance document. Yay, we have Don on the call. So we can talk we about do. it. And we have time. This is awesome. All Ooh. the stars are aligning. So um, let's take a look at this. Don, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Uh, yes, I can talk about this. Um, so the idea behind this was that the Chaos Project has changed and grown dramatically since the original charter was put in place for the, the governing board. And that was really the only governance document that we had was the was the charter. So the idea behind this was that we, we keep the charter, which really does a great job of explaining what the governing board does, and then add some um, additional governance material around the, the working groups, the software, um, all, all kinds of stuff. You kind of see it in this, this governance diagram. Um, but the idea was that we... We really want to keep this as simple as possible. So people will tend to try to want to add everything to the governance documentation, um, but we don't want that. We want to keep it as clean as we possibly can, as simple as we possibly can, because every change we want to make to this in the future is going to require governing board approval. Um, so the idea is we talk in general about things like the, the structure, so we have working groups, we have software sub projects, we have um, chapters, which are based on geographies and we have roles. So we have things like chairs, we have chapter leads, uh, we have um, maintainers. So the idea is we describe what all of those are and then we'll have a separate document that we link to, which has the current list of like working groups, software sub projects and the people in, in each of the roles for that particular group. Um, 
with the idea then, so so you can see that I've, I've left comments that those the actual names will be pulled out. Um, I've left them in the document for now, just because I think it's uh, I think it helps people understand what's what uh, what we're talking about and which which metrics working groups fit within which um, category. But we'll have a separate page which will have all of those details. And so we're not we're not making this governance document doesn't actually make any changes to what we're doing. Um, the idea is that we're just starting to document the stuff that we're doing better. So, so don't think of this as like a big change to anything. This is just being a little bit more clear about how we're structured and who's responsible for what. So the question in the chat was, can we have a single page for all the highlighted parts? Yes, absolutely. Um, the idea is, oh, you can see it right here, that Teams at Chaos page um, is, is probably where we will, um, we'll probably take that page and kind of rewrite it um, so that it has all of the current things on it and it's up to date. And then we'll just keep that page up to date and it'll have all the stuff on it. So it'll have all the working groups, all of the, so the software sub projects, and then the um, chapters. And would it just be a description of that um, role? So for example, like Elizabeth, community manager, it wouldn't mention her by name, but it would just say, here's what the community manager does on that other page, um, or would it mention her by name? Elizabeth, can you click on that page? Um, so it would be similar to what this is now, but this is kind of badly formatted, um, but it would have the, you know, the group name. So what it is, probably a very brief description a link to where they do their work. So that could be a repository, that could be somewhere. Um, and then it would have the leadership roles. We'd probably get rid of the example types of contributions and just have, so we would have like, so the OSPO working group um, that would have like, you know, me as a chair, it would have other people as maintainers. Um, and so we would list the roles and the people in those roles. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, and um, the idea is we're, I think Sean is working on scheduling a governing board meeting mm -hmm. for us to, yes. um, and one of the things- Nicole on, and I are, yes. Yeah, so one of the next things on that agenda will be to ratify this document. So if you have any comments on it, now's your, now's your time to comment. Um, and then we'll, yeah, we'll ratify this in the governing board meeting and then we'll, um, put it on the in the repository and probably on the website. It's a good it's a good step towards our own sustainability to have something like this together, I think. Yeah. And and over time, I think that, you know, these this will evolve over time. There will be changes we'll need to make to it. Um, but the idea is we get this as good as we can, as simple as we can. And then, and then we can evolve it later. So, you know, we have some, the only really new thing that's in here is the liaison role, which is something that we've talked about, um, but not actually implemented. And that, that may work or not, right? Um, we may find that we don't need liaisons or we might find that they're incredibly valuable and we wanna have more of them or, or something. So my point is that we can, we can always change the, um, we can always change this later. This isn't like, forever set in stone must yeah. must be the way it works it just it just requires governing board approval to do it yeah. um and the other things that we talked about i i spent some time talking to vinia about this um is that we probably want to put more details about what some of these groups do um so like maybe we maybe we'd want to have like a like a role description for like a maintainer and go into loads of detail about what the maintainers are doing or details about you know what a what a co-chair does and how you become a co-chair and how you um, you know exactly how it works. So we can we can create additional documents with more details about each of these things. And so I think that that will that will also help. So over time we'll we'll kind of uh, beef this up a little bit, but probably outside of the the document that way because we're all handbooks. That way those those can change more frequently and we don't have to vote on those every time we decide that the co-chair should also do X or Y or Z. So that would be another document, just not bad, like the details of what a maintainer is. Um, yeah, we, we can do that. Um, absolutely. 
it's it's one of the things that we've done um, in the Kubernetes project. So in at least within contributor strategy, they have role handbooks for each of the roles. And it's it's just a really detailed description of exactly what that does that you know that that person or or role is responsible for. So that that allows us to provide a lot more details so that if somebody's interested in becoming a maintainer, they can look at that role handbook and see exactly what that means. And then we don't have to go through governing board approval to change that description. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that allows us to evolve <laughs> these roles within the constraints that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, and so the other thing that I did, so you scroll just up, up just a little tiny bit. All right. Uh, right there. So where it says maintainers are selected by the leaders of the group to be represented. Um, is that there were some questions about this. So my idea was that different, like the software sub projects are led by a group of maintainers, that the chapters are led by chapter leads. The working groups are led by chairs. So I could detail all of that out. Um, I left it a little bit ambiguous and just said, said the leaders of the group to be represented. Do people mm -hmm. think that that's clear or does that require, should I reword that? Uh, I think it needs to be reworded, but I, I'm the one that left the comment. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I know what you mean, and I don't think we want to get too specific as to your earlier point. Uh, Some rewording wouldn't hurt, but, but it does need not? to be clear. Yeah. Um, because yeah. so, this is, so, this is kind of an important part, right? This is, this is who's allowed to select maintainers for in, in this example, it's, it's um, elsewhere in the document, I think around selecting liaisons or something. Can I, can I uh, uh, describe why I put the comment in real quick? Please. Yeah. Okay. So when we, when we look at governing board, it's very clear how the governing board is, is set, right? So the, it, it says that the, the governing board is, Governing board members are picked by the existing governing board. When we get to uh, leads or, or work group chairs, it's very clear that work group chairs are elected by or selected by consensus from the members of the group. So that is very clear. Uh, when we get to liaisons and maintainers, it just says leaders. However, leaders is not used that term isn't used anywhere else in the document. Uh, it, if the, so the, the question is, is it just the chairs that are picking the maintainers or is it the chairs and the maintainers in the group? Is it a collection of the chairs, maintainers and liaisons who, who choose? Yeah, it depends. It depends on the group. So for software sub projects, it would be the collection of maintainers because they don't have chairs for the, the software sub projects. Um, for the working groups, it would be uh, chairs because that's kind of the top level leadership for the working groups. Um, I will I will fix this. How's that? I will I will reword this in some way that makes it clear. So I'll either be clear about who the leader is in each of the sections so that then I can say this or I will just be more explicit in these two places. I'll I'm, I'm gonna think about that a little bit and look at it. Um, and then let let you know so you can have another so people can have another crack at it to see if if our people are happy with it. But no, did you have a question? Yes. So one of the, uh, I just have a comment. I was reviewing the knowledge base, and one of the feeling that I came across is from a newcomer perspective, like a cheerleader. Different terminologies are representing, which is making me more confused. Like. Am I clear? What is the difference between a chair, a leader, a liaison, or a maintainer? You know, so mm -hmm. maybe either a definition that what is the clarity for those terms, or maybe just one term for each group. Maybe lead for the chapter, lead for the working group, lead for all the groups, right? Uh, single terminology, or if we are keeping multiple terminologies, then a clear definition for those. Okay, I will work on that. Thank you. Okay. Don, I have a question about this team stuff. So originally we put this together um, for newcomers who were looking to contribute and it was meant to be kind of a guide. We had it in a spreadsheet and we tried to 
like pull it in and it did not work very well. Um, but so that's why we have these example types of contributions in this column here. Um, would there be space for this somewhere else? Or where would you recommend, do we, where, where would you recommend we put this if we, if we still wanna keep that open for newcomers to kind of help them find where they wanna go? Oh, okay. So that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe we can keep it in the stock. I didn't know why it was there. It seemed extraneous to me, but now that you've explained it, I think I understand why, um, why we have it there. So let's, uh, yeah, let's think about that a little bit. Let okay. me, let me think about maybe other ways to display this. And if anybody has any clever ideas, because, you know, we need to put the working groups in kind of categories and, you know, maybe the example types of contributions go by the category. Um, let me just, let me think about this a little bit. And if anybody has any ideas for how we can make this way better, then just uh, let me know. Yeah, and this is like in no order at all. We were just like brain dumping in this. So it's it's completely <laughs> random and just, yeah. So it's- uh, Who, who made this document? Sorry? Who made this document? Um, on. And Matt and myself started it in a spreadsheet just so we would have something to point newcomers to um, informally that we're asking, like, how can I contribute? It's like, well, here's some teams you can think about joining. And here's the kind of contributions that, you know, and then we thought, oh, I'll put it out on the in the community knowledge base, make it a little more visible instead of it just in a spreadsheet. But that's where it kind of stopped. So <laughs> we haven't really looked at it or I don't think updated it. There. It's just kind of hanging out there. Like, yeah, it still has like some of the older teams that aren't really active any longer. So we will need to like make sure that it's getting updated regularly or link it to something else or I'm not sure, but that was the original kind of evolution of this doc right here. We were we were talking about a third document as well, weren't we? That uh, described the uh, the uh, the working groups. Is that correct? I think we were going to replace that doc you're talking about, replace this with that. Yeah. So it would be like the governance doc would link to this page, but this page would not be for newcomers necessarily. It would be just for our own transparency of what groups are out there. Is that correct, Don? Um, yes. So like these other like kind of ex extraneous -y types of groups that are like sometimes ad hoc or you know like the um i don't know you know the chaos chaos con planning like would we still add that even though it's not like a super formal group it's just kind of a you know floaty <laughs> yeah if you go if you go back to the governance updates um there's a section for operational working groups if you scroll scroll up just a bit um yeah, here you go. So, so these are, um, so this whole section was designed for those exact things. So the things that are less formal maybe than some of the other working groups, they may have meetings, they may not, but they're focused around doing something for the project. So this is where we have things like, like badging, chaos con, uh, communications and, um, and like I said, you know, we can we can add and delete working groups as much as we want, as long as they're not in the governance document itself. So, you know, if we need to spin up a new one on, I don't know, you know, some some more translations or something, we can we can spin up, spin things up and down, um, especially within this within this section. Perfect. Any other questions? Uh, this looks, this is really good work done. I've looked over it and I think it's very helpful to have this knocked out like that and very clear. It really helps. Uh, um, oh, the other, the other thing. Um, so this governing board uh, diagram, uh, if, if somebody with some better design skills wants to just redo that and replace it with an image of uh, a governance diagram that you know, has has these components, but looks pretty, that would be awesome. Uh, Sophia, you have your hand up. I, I'm i not offended by that graphic, I actually like it. No, it actually um, I, works In for general, me. I, I really like this. I'm really excited to see it written down. I think it's very helpful. Um, 
I guess sort of a, a general question I would have. Um, I noticed in one of your references, you had like maintainers MD and I'm, I'm curious, I know you talked a little about what Kubernetes does, but like they have their owner's files and I'm, I'm wondering with some of these file types, if there are a standard naming that we should be aware of um, when we create some of these other anchor docs that are gonna reference this, that we can be more consistent to what others are doing in the broader community so they know how to find these docs. Um, or just like, as I don't really know if there's like a list of standard naming for doc type, um, but I was just kind of curious in, in your view of sort of managing contributor documentation and projects, if there are specific naming criteria we should be aware of. Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Um, the typically what, what I've tended to see is, is a maintainers.md file for projects that don't have um, really granular um, permission structures. So the reason Kubernetes has the owner's files is because they have prow, which is a boss for owner's files. And it looks specifically for, um, you know, each subdirectory of the code has an owner's file to tell you exactly who's responsible and who's allowed to, to merge updates to that particular bit of the code. Um, for projects that don't have that kind of rigorous structure, um, I think a maintainers.md file is, is probably probably a lot more common. I don't know if other people have different perspectives, but this is this is kind of this is kind of the way that I've seen it work, at least with a lot of like the CNCF. Yeah, we've used yeah. owners.md files on some parts of Augur. I mean, it is helpful. Um, yeah, the GitHub gives you some nice automation around that, but most projects I don't think use it. Yeah. Yeah, because the, um, so, you know, if, if we need to use owner's files for more granular details, I think that's that's fine. Um, those are, owner's files are sometimes hard for people to parse and it's hard for people to find them because mm -hmm. they're so buried mm -hmm. in every single directory. Whereas yep. just a list of maintainers um, yeah. can be really, really helpful. 100%. And I've yeah. done in a pretty, pretty nice way. I think it was, uh, I might have to, Hook around a little bit, but um, there there are some projects that have done a nice job of of listing their uh, their maintainers in a way that um, gives you a little more details. Yeah, here's here's an interesting one. I'll drop it in the chat. Um, this one for Harbor, which is a CNCF project, which has things like um, feature areas and leads. It has sections for the different types of, of maintainers. So it breaks out the people that are responsible for community versus docs versus the code base. Um, so it's not that we need anything this complicated, but my point is that like an owner's file has to be a specific structure. A maintainer's file, you can structure it in any way that makes sense for your project. Because it's just, it's just free form text. Like there's no specific format that it has to have. Does that make sense? Is the mm -hmm. governance what you're showing go back, Elizabeth? Is that is that the document that you are proposing basically? So they have uh, a governance doc. They yes, they have a governance doc, which frankly I'm not sure exactly what that looks okay. like. I was and, just it was um, it's just Sophia's question, like <laughs> how do we bring these together? But, yeah. So the governance doc typically links to the maintainers. Okay. Um, MD. Uh Typically, I'm not sure exactly what this one does. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this governance doc isn't isn't necessarily my favorite. I like the way they've done the maintainers file, but not necessarily. They would be they would be connected. But they, they should be connected. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we would link to the maintainers MD files for both of uh, Grimoire Lab and um, Augur. So, so Georg, I think Grimoire Lab would probably need to create an, a maintainers.md file because I didn't see one um, for the software. So, so think about that. Um, maybe talk to some people uh, within Paturgia about what makes sense to do there. Okay. I'll take a look at the maintainers files that we have elsewhere and propose something. I think Santi is just going to be the maintainer. only maintainer 
across all those repos? Uh, well, he's the main person. I, you, you know, yeah, I, basically anybody um, who'd be allowed to merge software would be a maintainer. OK. Yeah, so it's probably most of the engineers um, yeah. working on the project should be in the maintainer's file if they're pretty active and um, you know merging things. And and part of part of why you want that is is you know it provides good continuity if something were to happen to somebody. Yep, sounds good. I'll take that and forward that. Okay, and let me know if you have any questions or if we need to do something different. It doesn't it doesn't have to be this, but we should figure that out before the governing board approves the governance doc. I think okay, the maintainers that really MD file is, is, a, is a, I think the maintainers that MD is a perfectly sound approach. It's pretty common. It makes it clear who the maintainers are. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so Don, next steps then are you going to uh, take another pass at this and then bring it back to this group, or I don't know if there's time actually to bring it back to this group before the meeting since we don't have a meeting next week. I don't think there's a lot that needs to be changed. I think it's mostly the uh, the leaders. That whole clarifying all of that. Okay. Yeah, clar clarifying that. Um, can we add uh, can we add chaos initiatives to that governance? Uh, no, those, those well? are actually those have been renamed to the operational working groups. So badging, comms, chaos, Bad, comms. badging is operational. Yes. Yes. Operations. So these these are people that handle some some initiative basically, but we didn't we didn't want to call them something separate. We wanted to call them a working group so that we could simplify the governance structure. Okay. I know it seems a little weird, but if we have a separate category, then we have to define all of the things for that category. And it seemed um, it seemed more straightforward to call them a, you know, just a different type of working group. No, no complaints here. I just missed, okay. I missed that bit. So okay, cool. so, sounds good. I, I understand. Okay. I just want to make sure I want to make sure you're on board. I don't want to make sure we're doing something weird. I want to get all the weirdness out before we approve it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Don. Thanks, everybody, for your comments and your input. Um, this is fantastic. I'm really happy that we have this, as others have also said. Like, it's just wonderful. So thank you so much, Don, for all your hard work on this. No, thank yeah, you. Yeah, happy to. Um, can we move forward, then, to this next link? Is that cool with everybody? Yeah. Awesome. Let's check it out. What is this? Yeah, I, I, I've posted that uh, link. I came across this article where they are using the chaos matrix. So I wanted to bring to the community's notice that they are using chaos matrix and trying to create a database and UI integration, things like this. So just this was more of bringing to the community's knowledge that I came across yesterday. <coughs> Yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, do we have a list somewhere of like all the <coughs> chaos metrics? If not, we should maybe start one. We sort of did a while ago. It got a little hard to track all of the uses, yeah. references across the many different yeah. places. They've clearly mentioned in this paper that chaos and OSSF. Uh, is uh, complementary because they provide the metrics for us to develop the database and visualize it. I see Goggins gets a shout out as well. Yep. Nice one. I mean, at SIGCHI too, there was another paper that referenced uh, yeah. chaos. <laughs> some DEI work they were doing as well from Carnegie Mellon. Mm -hmm. I think it might be nice, even though it's hard to keep track, like it might be nice just to have a list, you know, because um, I know that sometimes we need to sh kind of show our impact or be able to, you know, ex yep. express how we are affecting things. So 
Um, you, were, you had a me remember the media mention thing that you had? Ah, uh, would that yes. count? We had that. I don't know if it's still on the website after the redesign. It was on the media page. I honestly can't find it since the reorg of the website. <laughs> it's not on the website. However, it does still exist in the website repo. Oh. So the uh, that document does still exist, and it could be put onto the website at any time. Uh, or it could be oh. reconfigured and placed elsewhere. Oh. Or uh, there was also uh, like I have looked at the different open source project where they say if you want to link your work with the project, here is a way you create an issue or something like that, and anybody can uh, refer to that. Do we want to, um, Vinod? Can I give you this action item to add that? Sure. Uh, as a PR. Sure. Give you work. I love I love to volunteer people for work with yeah without their consent it's pretty great. Um, let's find that doc for you though, real quick. Uh, Georg. Yes. Last time I think we discussed about uh, putting bibliographic references to our kiosk, uh, kiosk metric page. In that way, any time that people reference it, we can count it also to keep track. That's one way we could do. I don't know how uh, that went yeah. across. Because there are a lot of things that people are citing that they build their own bibliographic references now on our end, we cannot track it. So if we can do that, then in different uh, scholastic website, we just facilitate that process. Now they can just pick up that uh, citation in whatever format they are using. And then we can now keep track of the citations. Yeah, so, it would be nice to have a paper published or something with a DOI, a digital object identifier, that uh, we can say, if you reference chaos, please reference this paper. And then Google <coughs> Scholar and others will take care of the backlinks, where we can then see every paper that references this. Is, uh, is that what you're talking about? I'm sorry. Yeah, we can do the DOI or we just use either a simple, uh, b b like the bib tag or different bibliographic because not all citations are using, let's say bib tag. Some are using uh, <clears throat> like an information system. I think you guys are using a different reference format. We can just make like two or three, the most common ones. And if we can have the DOI, it's also good to have it. Uh I think we have the same thing in the chaos GitHub. Uh, we experimented it, but nobody is using that. Like uh, GitHub has created like reference style <clears throat> for the referencing to the repo or chaos. Uh, so it was somewhere here, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh... That conversation from probably like two right. years ago, where we right. had a reference over here. I think we, because we were trying to say if you reference the metric, do it here, but then we changed, I think, our approach and now we're adding that stable link to every metrics page. But we don't really have one for, I guess they could just reference chaos.community if they need to, I don't know. But this is great. So thank you so much um, for finding this. That's really awesome. I'm gonna have to read through that later on. Thank you, Vinod. Sure. If anybody sees, I guess if anybody sees anything else, any other papers, here's the here's the place where you can add it. Uh, well, it was where did where did I put it here? About it was in there. There we go. And there's a thing called coverage right here. And so. this is an unstructured list of any mention of chaos. So any blog post that is written that mentions chaos, anything that you do, any talk that you give, we can all link to that here. Cool. All right. All right. We are out of time. Um, do we, can we push this till not next week, but the week after? Is that okay? I don't know who put this on here. Yes. Yeah, I did. Okay. So.
Okay, cool. We will do that then. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Me and too. we'll not see you here next week, the week after. So take care. Bye. Bye.